All right, welcome back. You're still watching Why in the Morning. I'm Brian Sanko, and you're talking about matters, politics, youth, and leadership. Before we went on a break, uh, we were literally trying to uh, shine the light on uh, uh, the possible solutions that uh, the current government can put in place. But then also on the other side, we saw... Um, the, the, the political parties' funds that had delayed. Of course, we saw uh, members of parliament who had gone to Mombasa. They protested Kidogo. But then later on, the money was released around, I think, amount close to 1.47 billion to benefit all the 48 political parties. And, uh, of course, the leading party, which is... Um, uh, UDA, uh, which is also part of the cu uh, current government at hand, got the biggest here. Uh, I'm yet to actually get the exact amount, but uh, I'll get it in just a bit. And then the, the, the question was, um, what do you think was the criterion that was used to allocate these funds? Because, of course, of course, the leading party was literally aimed to, you know, get the largest share. What do you, th what do you think? What are your sentiments on that? Yeah, I think, number one, uh, whatever the members of parliament were agitating for while they were at the cost, uh, it was not really the political party's funds. Uh, that should be the CDF or something. Yes. Yeah, that CDF is what they were national agitating national for. Uh, for the political party's fund. Uh, CDF including, you know. Yeah. yeah, the political party's fund, that one is governed by the political party's act. Right. And 70% of the funds is uh, divided proportionately across board. Right. And this, uh, the criterion is, uh, this is dependent on the number of votes that each party right. garnered, uh, like in total, from right. the preceding uh, general elections. Right. So there is already a criteria on how this is distributed. Right. Okay. Let me just read for you. The top party that received uh, the biggest share was UDA, that uh, got 288.5 million. Then we had ODM coming in second with 154, Jubilee 67.5, M, Wiper Party 36 million, and then DAPK. Those are uh, highlighted among top 10 parties. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, continue. Certainly, uh, UDA is bound to receive more funds uh, in terms of the number of votes they garnered. And also, this is in relation to the number of uh, seats that they won. Uh, nationwide okay so uda is bound to receive the largest share then as you've uh, read out odm has followed there's jubilee there's dapk right. so there is a criteria that is used for these funds to be released but if you remember before uh in the previous uh, regime the nasa the nasa yeah. coalition there was some uh, there were there was some unrest um, uh, among the umbrella uh, parties within the NASA uh, fraternity, where some parties like Ford Kenya and Wiper complained that ODM is bullying them in terms of the political parties fund. But the question was, uh, was whether it was computed as NASA or as each, uh, each party individually, you see. But right now here, uh, I think that confusion is not there. Yeah, it is quite direct. But whatever the, the MPs were calling for and they were talking about the kids are not going to school because funds have not been released until when uh, the speaker, uh, Honorable Wetangula, went there and they had a truce and some yeah. funds were released for them yeah. to like, support uh, their constituents, especially children going back to school. Right. Yes. Which is, which is a good thing because initially it was like it's now a fight. You know, it's like the current leadership is denying them their right, which I think took some time because, of course, also the economy is took a nosedive. So money is not as easily as available as mm -hmm. previously it was. Now, let's talk about Nairobi Kidogo. Of course, uh, Governor Sakaja, as before we exit, Governor Sakaja came to office. Uh, he's tried to give Nairobi a facelift, and uh, there's been a lot of changes, especially, I remember those days, uh, those days, uh, it, seems like, it seemed like a, uh, a back and forth when he gave a direction to ensure that all public uh, matatus should be operating out of CBD. And then um, we had, uh, we had uh, his friend, uh, our deputy, our dear deputy, <laughs> regarding Gashago, saying before he, he makes any, you know, any decision regarding the city, he must first of all consult him. 
and, and because, you know, they, they, they are the ones who assisted him. In fact, they're still allies. Do you feel like it was the right move to do that? And in as much as businesses are concerned and whatnot, but anyways, it's his leadership and he has the authority and the power to do what is right for the netizens of the country. Now, number one, uh, the people of Nairobi voted for a governor. Yeah. And the governor is Honorable Sakaja. Right. But we also have the deputy president, who is the deputy president of the entire nation and not just Nairobi. So uh, the governor had a manifesto. He, ha he has a vision for Nairobi. And for him to, uh, for the vision to be realized, he has to take some actions. Right. And one of the actions is he wants the Matatus out of the CBD. Right. This, this conversation has been there. This is not the first time the conversation is coming up. Right. But the question again, the Matatus going out of the CBD, it is in whose interest? Is it in the interest of the people of Nairobi at large or is it in the interest of a few? Right. So it must be in the interest of the people of Nairobi at large. At first, it may be uncomfortable for the people, but eventually, you know, change is a hard thing, right. but eventually you, you'll come and get used to it. Let me give you an example. When COVID hit, and we were told that there's curfew, and now we, we were to be in our houses by 10 p.m. At first it was hard, but we got used to it to, to an extent where uh, when the, the restrictions were lifted, guys were just finding them, themselves at home by 10. Right. You'd be in Nairobi, CBD. Guys are not there because right. they were used to a certain norm. So right. over here, the first question is, in whose interest is it? that right. we want, uh, that Governor Sakaja wants the Matatus out of the CBD. Right. If it is in the interest of the people of Nairobi at large, then let it uh, be so. Right. But it, it should not just be like an authority coming from above. It should be after consultations with the stakeholders. Right. Yes. But then he's also right, he, he's also right in his own way as the governor of the city. But like you mentioned, it should be on, for the interest of each and every person. Mm -hmm. That includes the inhabitants of the city yes. and even those that come and go. Of course, Nairobi is a business hub, you know, mm -hmm. for the country, which is uh, the decisions that should be made should actually be looked into. Mm -hmm. And I think on that note, we can call it a day, Devi, and we'll have to allow you. I understand you have a court session, so I'll have to uh, let you go. But uh, just in case someone wants to seek your services, apart from me seeking his legal services, to disturb my enemies. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm playing. If people want to seek your uh, law, sir, lead, hey, Jesus, I don't want Kenya School of Law to come for me. Let me just say services. If people want to seek your services, where can they get you? Uh, where are your offices? And how can they actually plug in to support you? That's your camera. So um, our offices are in Kilimani, Wuyi Plaza, come to uh, suite E5, second floor that is ABK Advocates LLP. And you can also find ABK Advocates LLP on our social media uh, platforms. There's the Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and also Instagram. And also you can find me on uh, social media platforms at uh, David Ogara, JNR. David Ogara, JNR at, um, on Instagram. Ogara, JNR on Twitter. And David Ogara, on Facebook, yes. Right. All right, and, and there's an email that somebody can send you, just in case. They yeah, there's an again. email, okay. and uh, the email you can send it to d.ogara at abklaw.co.ke. Maybe I can do that again. Yeah. d.ogara abk at abklaw.co.ke. All right. It. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. David. W. Ogara. Uh, he's the advocate of the High Court of Kenya, associate advocate at ABK Advocates LLP. And uh, first of all, thank you for coming through. It's been like 14 years, you know, somebody you schooled with, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm really shocked that, you know, some of us are in law, in media. There's a lot of us who are in media, you mm -hmm. know, like Mushina from Keys and the rest. Uh, there's yeah. Cecilia. Uh, who else do you remember? Malomba. Malomba from, yeah, he's, I loved him at Kiss. Yeah. So, so, look at how the universe works. You know, they say mountains never made, but human beings made. And uh, say hello to the Ogara family. I know they're watching. You know. Certainly, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to me. Shout out to you and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Sour, sour. Thank you so much. We're going to take a very short break. We come back with our MCM segment. And remember, it's about to get late. Of course, we had asked you a question on our social media platform. Say, Boenda Pale, 2244 channel. Find out. Leave your comment. We'll be coming back in just a short while at Brian Sakuan 1. Hashtag is still why in the morning.